Imagine this. What if our consciousness, the very essence of our being, isn't just a byproduct of our physical brain, but something non-physical, something that suggests a divine designer? A rather intriguing proposition, isn't it? This forms the basis of Richard Swinburne's argument for God from consciousness. Swinburne, a renowned scholar from Oxford, asserts in his argument that there's a non-physical mental element to our minds, interlinked with our physical brains in a way that suggests design, hence a designer. Swinburne isn't shy to propose that this designer is God. Think about it. The human mind is capable of contemplating universals, abstract concepts that have no material existence. We think about mathematics, literature, art, justice, mercy, and countless other abstract concepts. These contemplations, as brain surgeon Michael Egnor points out in his article, the fundamental difference between humans and non-human animals, cannot be physically instantiated because universals, by their very nature, are non-material. Moreover, a 2023 article titled Head Truth, The Huge Case for Thinking Minds Do Not Come From Brains, lends empirical weight to this theory. In the article, which reviewed a massive study of brain imaging data, it was found that researchers couldn't find any significant correlation between the brain states and mental states of their 23,000 subjects. To state the obvious, this lack of correlation lends strong support to Swinburne's contention that the human mind has a profoundly non-physical aspect to it, and that our consciousness is therefore not entirely dependent on our physical brains. But there's an even more robust argument for God from consciousness. Specifically, quantum mechanics, with all its counterintuitive wonders, offers an even more compelling argument for God from consciousness. Eugene Wigner, a Nobel laureate in physics, once said that the study of the external world has led us to the scientific conclusion that consciousness is the ultimate universal reality. Here's how the argument unfolds. Consciousness either preceded all of material reality, as theists claim, or is a byproduct of material reality, as materialists claim, or is an intrinsic property of material reality, as panpsychists argue. Yet if consciousness is a byproduct or an intrinsic property of material reality, then it should have no special position within that reality. But if consciousness precedes material reality, as theists hold, then it should hold a special, even central position. And guess what? Consciousness does indeed hold a special, even central position within material reality, strongly suggesting that consciousness must precede material reality. Quantum mechanics supports this argument with a plethora of evidence. For instance, a delayed choice experiment with atoms found that reality at the quantum level doesn't exist if you're not observing it. In another study, a violation of Leggett's inequality implies that reality doesn't exist when we're not observing it. Perhaps the best evidence from quantum mechanics that consciousness must precede material reality is the closing of the freedom of choice loophole by Anton Zeilinger and company in 2018. As Zeilinger once stated, what we perceive as reality now depends on our earlier decision what to measure, which is a very, very deep message about the nature of reality and our part in the whole universe. We are not just passive observers. To state the obvious, these findings from quantum mechanics, along with many other lines of evidence from quantum mechanics that have not been mentioned, provide strong empirical support for the theist's position, namely that consciousness must precede material reality. In essence, both Swinburne's argument and the quantum mechanical argument for God from consciousness provide very persuasive arguments backed by scientific evidence that consciousness must precede physical reality. To put it mildly, this understanding has profound implications for our perception of reality, our place in the universe, and indeed it has profound implications for our very lives. In conclusion, the next time you find yourself deep in thought contemplating some marvel of nature, remember that your mind, your observations, and even your very thoughts in and of themselves provide some of the most compelling evidence for the existence of God. As Paul stated in Corinthians, we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ.